What's up? What's going on, guys? This is Mr. Gold, and today I am going to be doing grading every single team's draft class part one. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to go and every single team in the NFL, I will be grading their entire draft class, not just their draft player, their entire draft class. So we'll probably do eight teams today, and then uh, we'll, this will be a four-part series. We'll do eight teams every video. Let's get into it. And we're back. Hope you guys like that intro. But let's just jump right into it. We're going to be doing it by division, not in alphabetical order. We're going to be doing it by division, and we'll start off with the NFC East. So to start them off, we got the Philadelphia Eagles. And their draft picks include Jalen Rigor, a wide receiver from TCU. A surprise pick in Jalen Hurts, a quarterback from Oklahoma. They got a compensatory comp pick from, uh, yeah, just a compensatory pick. And they took Davion Taylor from Colorado. Good safety in Kayvon Wallace from Clemson. Then you got Jack Driscoll, an offensive lineman. John Hightower, a wide receiver. Sean Bradley, a linebacker. Quez Watkins, a wide receiver. Prince Tega Wanagoho, Wana an offensive tackle. And with their final pick, they took Casey Tuhill from Stanford. So, I like this draft class. I think that the number 53 pick... Jake Fromm fell to, like, the fifth round, so I don't exactly understand why they took Jalen Hurts, but let's go over the first pick. So, Jalen Rigor, they passed up Justin Jefferson, which I think did surprise quite a few people, but it's not the worst move in the entire world. He's definitely a solid wide receiver, and that if there's one thing that the Eagles need, it's wide receivers. So, that's a pretty good move there. Jalen Hurts is kind of an odd move. I don't know why you would go after quarterback in the second round and you could have waited till your fourth or fifth round selection like it doesn't necessarily make sense but <clears throat> and then that third pick there is Davion Taylor he's not uh, outside linebacker from Colorado good to get some linebacker help I believe Nigel Bradham left if I'm correct so definitely a good move there then Kayvon Wallace I like him he's from Clemson that's my college football team right there and definitely a solid safety to help out there after losing Malcolm Jenkins. So he, that I really like that move. Jack Driscoll um, and Prince Tega Wanagoho are their two offensive linemen that they took. And both of them, I, I'm surprised that Prince Tega Wanagoho fell that far. I thought he was going to be quite a lot higher up there, but he fell to the sixth. So solid selection there. And Jack Driscoll should help on that offensive line that they just lost Jason Peters. Then, wide receivers, in all just, like they took Rieger in the first, they took Hightower in the fifth, and they took Quez Watkins in the sixth. So, they did go heavy on wide receivers. Three out of their, what would be like, eight picks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten picks. So, three out of their ten picks. So, they did go heavier on wide receiver than I believe any other position. But definitely a good move there. I'll go ahead and give that one. Yeah, that one's pretty good. And then Casey Tuhill is that final pick over there. And Shad Bradley and Davion Taylor, all three of them are linebackers. So apparently they wanted to address that decision. I like this draft class. I'm going to give it a B because I think they did pass up on some better guys. But guys like Kayvon Wallace, Prince Tega Wanagoho later in the rounds, Jalen Rigor and Davion Taylor do make this a pretty solid draft class. So a B. Then the Dallas Cowboys... And all of their selections. Let's see here. So they just had a clean little, uh, just a seven pick right there. Only seven picks. They didn't quite tr follow tradition, but they had, in my opinion, and in a lot of other people's opinions, a very, very solid draft. I definitely like their draft. I think they did a very good job. CD Lamb is that number one. Trayvon Diggs at the number two. Neville, excuse me. Neville Gallimore at that number three, Reggie Robinson, Tyler Bahiadez, Bradley Ane, and 
Ben Nusi, Ben Denusi. So definitely liking all those picks. I really like this one. So CD Lamb. We got a report from them saying that they weren't even going to take a wide receiver, but they were surprised that CD Lamb was still available, so they went after him. But I really like that second pick, pick number 51. I'm surprised Trayvon Diggs fell that floor, but definitely a great pick. Trayvon Diggs, I, that was a guy I wanted the Seahawks to get, but he's definitely one of the better cornerbacks in the draft. Then Neville Gallimore from Oklahoma, he's a defensive tackle, definitely a good one there to help out with the loss of Malik Jackson and others. So definitely a good move there. Reggie Robinson, they are, were addressing that cornerback position. Reggie Robinson the second from Tulsa. Definitely a good pick there. Got him in the fourth round. Then Tyler Bayadez, a center, is basically the replacement for uh, Fredericks because he retired this year. So definitely a good move there and one of the better centers. Bradley Aine, the defensive end from Utah. Definitely a solid move there. And Ben Dinusi who is basically not worth that much because they got Andy Dalton and uh, Dak Prescott. So I'm really liking this one. I'm going to give it an A because I do really like the value that they got into all of this. Then next team up, we have the New York Giants. And their picks are a surprise pick at number four, Andrew Thomas, an offensive tackle from Georgia. Xavier McKinley with their second. Matt Hurt with their third. Darnay Holmes with their fourth. Shane Lemieux from with their fifth, Cam Brown with their sixth, Carter Coughlin from with their seventh, TJ Brunson with their eighth, Chris Williamson with their ninth, and Tay Crowder with their tenth, and he is Mr. Irrelevant. So definitely good move there. I like those moves. Uh, Xavier McKinley, arguably the best safety in the in the entire draft. Definitely a good move there to get him in round two. Um, like not a lot of super duper like helping them here but definitely some good moves i definitely can see like andrew thomas making a lasting impact uh, and he's gonna have to replace eric flowers i can see xavier mckinley alongside jabril peppers over there matt hart should make some moves he's from yukon he's an offensive tackle um darnay holmes will help at that corner pack position shane lemux is a guard from oregon and he should help just beef up that line they went pretty heavy on line they grabbed three in the first five rounds and then let's see cam brown from penn state i liked him coming out of the draft in the combine i think he could be a weapon for them carter coughlin he's from minnesota he's a defensive end he'll help on that edge rushing then tj brunson chris williamson and tay crowder linebacker cornerback and linebacker I mean, that's just pretty much filling some needs, and I think they did pretty solid, but not as solid as some other teams, and they did pass up on some good guys at number four, including the likes of Isaiah Simmons, so I'm going to give this one a B-, minus. like, not a lot of big names, but a guy that could make some impact. Then, the next team is the Washington Redskins, and they had approximately one, two, three, four, five, six, eight picks, and their first one was a no-brainer. It was Chase Young, defensive end, Ohio State. Obviously, that was who everyone expected them to take. Their round three pick, they completely skipped over round two, and they still got a good wide receiver in Antonio Gibson from Memphis. Then, uh, with that round four pick, Shadik Charles, an offensive tackle from LSU, was who they used that on. Then, with that next pick, they got Antonio Gandy-Golden, a wide receiver from Liberty. That's a solid move there. Round five, they got Keith Ishmael, a center from San Diego State. The next pick, they got Kakale Hudson, a linebacker from Michigan. Then with their seventh round pick, they got Carmen Curl, a safety from Arkansas. And with their other seventh, they got James Smith-Williams, a defensive end from North Carolina State. I'm liking these moves. Not loving them, but they did address the wide receiver position, which they lost uh, both Josh Doxson and Paul Richardson. So definitely some good moves there. Um, Gandy Golden could be a steal in the round four. Uh, Antonio Gibson was a good guy to get there. Shadik Charles will help that offensive line, which they just lost Trent Williams. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give that one a solid B- as well. Then, the Green Bay Packers, as we start the... Yeah, as we start the final division that we're going to talk about, it's the Green Bay Packers. And with their first pick, they took... Jordan Love, a very surprising pick. Jordan Love, quarterback, Utah State. No one expected this. 
way too early for a quarterback. You could have gotten Jake Fromm in the fifth. You did not need to go up and get Jordan Love. I don't like that move at all. Then they took A.J. Dillon which, in the second, which isn't really necessary because you've got Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams, so not really. Then Josiah DeGuro, a tight end from Cincinnati, and I do understand that one. I think that one pretty much legit is a good one. I like Josiah DeGuro is one of the better tight ends, and I think he could definitely help out their team. Kamal Martin is a linebacker. He'll help out that linebacker core. Then they took a pair of offensive linemen in John Runyon, a guard from Michigan, and Jake Hansen, a center from Oregon. Then they took Simon Stepanik, St- Stepanik, an offensive tackle, so I guess they took three. He's from Indiana. Then Vernon Scott, a safety from TCU, and Jonathan Garvin, a defensive end from Miami. I personally think that they never addressed their biggest position, which was wide receiver. I don't like this draft at all. I'm going to go ahead and give it a D because they didn't address their needs. They got some solid players in A.J. Dillon and Josiah Degira, but not necessarily players they needed. So, D. Then, the Minnesota Vikings had a slew of picks. Let's see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, th- Whew, 15 picks for the Vikings. That's quite a few. It started off, they took Justin Jefferson, and then they got pick number 31 from the 49ers and got Jeff Glad- Gladney. So, wide receiver and cornerback, two needs that they did have after losing both Stephon Diggs and guys like Trey Waynes and Xavier Rhodes. So, two good moves there. Then Ezra Cleveland, who I believe was a steal. He was a good move to get there, help out that offensive line. Uh, Cameron Dantzler from Mississippi State, he's a cornerback, that's a good move. DJ Wanoam, a SE. Huh, I don't know what that is. I believe it's some sort of end on the defense, but he's from South Carolina. And then James Lynch, a defensive tackle from Baylor, I think that was a good move to get him. And that'll help out after losing guys like Livnall Joseph and Everson Griffin. Troy Dye, a linebacker from Oregon. He's definitely going to help out there. Uh, you got Harrison Hand. He's a cornerback from Temple. He'll definitely be good. K.J. Osborne could end up being a good wide receiver. He's from Miami. Blake Brandell, from an offensive tackle from Oregon State. Kenny Wilkes, a defensive end from Michigan State. Nate Stanley, a quarterback from Iowa. Brian Cole the second, a safety from Mississippi State. And Kyle Hinton, a guard from Washburn. So, overall, I think it was a pretty solid draft. They had a slew of draft picks, and they addressed all the positions they need to. I am a little bit concerned that even though they took... They only took two corners. And I think they might have needed to take a few more. Maybe with that, uh... Wait... Never mind, they took three. Okay, never mind, they're fine. Uh, yeah, with Glandley and Dantzler, yeah, that's definitely a good move there. And then Harris at hand in the later rounds. I'm going to give that one a solid B+. I like it. Justin Jefferson should definitely help out. Then, the second-to-last team we're going to be talking about is the Chicago Bears. Their first pick was in the second round, and they took Cole Komet, a tight end from Notre Dame. And the Bears have over 10 tight ends on their roster, so they're definitely going very tight end heavy. And that's after releasing guys like Trey Burton. So, wow. Then, with their second pick there, they got Jalen Johnson. He's a cornerback from Utah. He'll definitely help out there. Uh, Trevis Gibson, a defensive end from Tulsa. That should help out. Kendall, Kendall Vidlor, a cornerback from Georgia Southern. Darnell Mooney, a wide receiver from Tulane. Arlington Hambright, a guard from Colorado, and Lechavius Simmons, an offensive tackle from Tennessee. So, definitely some good pickups there. Not a lot of picks, only seven. So, uh, definitely Cole Kmet, one of the better tight ends in the draft. Uh, you can't go wrong with Jalen Johnson. He'll definitely help out that corner. Core, Trevis Gibson should help out there, but... Uh, we didn't really see them going much on linebacker, uh, which I thought they might have needed after getting rid of Leonard Floyd, but they did re-sign Danny Trevathan, so they should be okay there. I'm going to go ahead and give that one a B-. minus. I don't think they addressed everything they could have, but they got some solid players. Then, final team we're going to talk about today is the Detroit Lions, and with their first pick, they took another no-brainer, Jeff Okuda, a cornerback from Ohio State. Definitely think this was a good move. 
best cornerback in the draft, no question. Easy pick there. Uh, DeAndre Swift is who they took with their second pick. He's a running back out of Georgia. He's a very solid player, arguably the best running back in the entire draft. Then they took Julian Aquara, a linebacker from Notre Dame. I thought he was really impressive, and I'm, that was a good dude right there. Jonah Jackson, a guard from Ohio State. Logan Stenberg, a guard from Kentucky. Quentin Cephas, a wide receiver from Wisconsin. Uh, Jason Huntley, a running back from New Mexico State. John Penasini, a defensive tackle from Utah. And Jason Cornell, a defensive tackle from Ohio State. So they addressed their needs. They doubled down on running back. They doubled down on guard. They got a solid linebacker after losing like Davon Kanard, and uh, they did not pick up the fifth year option of Gerard Davis. So definitely good moves there. Um, Quentin Cephas should help out that wide receiver core to complement both Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay. And you got some like Julian, then you've got guys like uh, John Penasini and Jay Sean Cornell to beef up that defensive tackle after losing Damon Harrison. So some solid moves there. I'll go ahead and give it a B. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.